Hello and welcome to you all. In this course I'm going to speak about the option market and I'm going to make a full introduction uh, tutorial course about the option market and I'm going to explain all the elements that we have inside, the components that we have for the trade, the type of trades which we can make, uh, the difference compared to the stock market and uh, as well you know with some examples for the real life on how to properly uh, use it how to connect the broker how to make the trades on the broker you know kind of like everything that you you know you know to resume in one phrase everything that you need in order to get started with the option market so yeah let's get on with it uh, as well you know i want to make uh, an important information before i'm starting that you know this is a complex strategy and as any financial market carries a big risk and most of the the trades performed here they don't take into account the fees commissions you know tax like that so all of this you know it has to be taken as an informational material and yeah i'm not going to speak about this anymore so let's get on with it. As I said, this option course is going to be divided initially in uh, these five parts. After that, you know, I'm going to create uh, an intermediate level, I would say, you know, with, uh, with more, uh, more advanced parts. But also, you know, at the end of these five parts, I forgot to specify it here, I'm, always, I'm also going to apply the broker part, you know, on how to perform these trades in a broker and how to make use of the elements in the broker you know and so on so yeah let's get on with the introduction we are going to see what are these options the anatomy of a knot of an option sim uh, symbol the periods of the exercise and the assignment of an option and of course the strategy that we have the basic strategy that we have you know for trading options so yeah what are these options an option, as we can see, it's a contract that gives the buyer the rights and the seller the obligation. Now, yeah, what does it mean this buyer rights and seller obligation? So, let's say you are a buyer, you know, and you perform uh, an option contract for you that, you know, you want to buy, for example, 100 shares of Tesla and you have for example as a period one month from now on and you have a strike price the strike price is the price that you want you know the tesla price to achieve in all this interval until you know until one month that you have for this you know let's say you don't have the money and because you don't have the money like imagine let's let's put some theoretical values uh, the price of tesla let's say it's one thousand per share if you would want to buy in this case, you know, it would be 1000 multiplied by 100 because each contract represents 100 shares in an option. So you will need a total cash value in this case of $100,000. Or you can just pay a premium, which represents a percentage, you know, of all of this value. And a seller, because whenever you are making an order, there is going to be somebody else, you know, on the opposite side of the trade. This seller is going to give you the possibility, but in this case for him, is an obligation that if the price, let's say for some reason, is going to go literally above that strike that, uh, that you know, you, you, you decided and it's going to be in money, it's going to give you those trades at the price that you establish. So in this case, the price of 1000 where it was being bought, but let's say the price, you know, for example, it would be at 1,050. So in this case, all the difference of this 1,050 to 1,000, which is going to be $50, you know, it's going to be for you. But yeah, I'm going to enter this more later with more practical examples. But yeah, as, I, as we can see, the buyer has the right, but not the obligation so let's say, for example, if the price is, do, is not go the direction that we want, we can just let the option expire and, you know, 
But if we are the seller, this is where things are more, much more complicated and we have to pay much more attention. You know, because yeah, at the beginning of the trade, you are going to receive the money, the premium, but if the trades goes against you, you can be hurt a lot. Because in the end, you know, you have to pay all of this difference is going to go to, no, to the buyer. But yeah, no problem, don't worry. Uh, later on, we are going to explain, uh, I'm going to explain uh, these two parts with, with uh, more details and uh, with examples. Now, as I'm say, I, as I told previously, why would you trade the options? First of all, you know, is the risk management. What I love about them is that from the beginning of the trade, if you are going to do everything calculated, of course, if you are not going to trade naked, the risk, you know, it's you are you would know exactly how much you are going to lose or how much you are going to win. Or yeah, or the potential of how much you want to win from the beginning. So in this case, you know, knowing from the beginning uh, the parts and the amount that you that you are going to lose is going to help you a lot in order to manage, you know, the that the capital that you have. And then not just that, but you are actually, when you enter in a trade, you don't need to, like I said previously, you don't need to pay all the money from the beginning. You know, you just have to pay a premium. And this one can help, you know, uh, to diversify that capital in an even better way. And not just that, you know, but at the same time, you know, like for example, you have some shares already, you can benefit from that and receive more interest into them. So in this case, you can improve the returns even more. You know, and at the same time, of course, improve the the, 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 the total portfolio re, uh, results. And yeah, because of the leverage that they have, you know, because they have a huge leverage, uh, you are going to pay a lot less money, you know, from your own pocket, and you are going to have a lot, a lot of choices. So yeah, let's see the difference, you know, that that, that we have with the with the stocks, because of course there are pro and there are cons as well. When you actually buy a stock, you actually have, you could say, in your hands, you know, a part of that company, you know, like when you buy one share or 10 shares or whichever amount from that company, you can say you you, you have some pertains, you know, from that, from that company. In this case, for example, it would be the voting rights because by having those shares is going to allow you to have the voting rights. But yeah, at the same time, imagine if you have those stocks and the price for some reason start to go negatively because they were in bankruptcy or I don't know what they did, you know, it can go to zero and you can lose all the money that you have, for example, in that stock. Then at the same time, you know, uh, you can have some potential profits at each quarter or each year through the dividends, like when a company going to pay for the owners of the stocks certain percentage you know so yeah and then of course the limited type of strategy that we have you can just buy the stock or sell the stock you know no more no less that's the only thing that you have but then if we go to the options you know we have a leverage with risk limit to the premium paid so yeah we are going to pay a premium and based on that you know we exponentially raise the potential benefits you know coming from it at the same time we have a higher or a lower break even yeah depends on the type of trades we are going to put it's a call or it's a put the biggest enemy i would say in some case scenario depending on the pa which part of the trade you are is going to be the life of that option with a stock you can keep it forever as long as that company exists with an option it's not like this you are always going to be limited by time you know, that because that option is going to expire in one day, one week, one month, one year, sooner or later it's going to do expire. And because of that, it's considered a decaying asset. And yeah, as well, like uh, the compared to stocks, we, you don't have any voting rights or dividends, but honestly, if you don't have a big, big uh, percentage of portfolio of an asset, you shouldn't care about this one. And a great call as well is that we have a lot of opportunities and a lot of strategies you know with options you don't just for example you can make if you know the market is going to be trending bullish you can put some strategies 
if it's going to stay uh, side market, you can combine that with you know with a neutral market, where you can combine it with a bullish or a bearish market. You can do that. You can go both bullish and both bearish at the same time, and you are going to lose, for example, if the market is in a, in a range market. So yeah, there are a lot of strategy. Don't worry, I'm going to explain this later. So yeah, like I said previously, the option buyer and the option seller. The option buyer, whenever it enters in a trade, is going to pay a premium. And it's like the guarantee from the beginning in order to have the right later on to exercise its right and buy those shares, you know, with the price established in the option contract. So in this case, you know, it's going to be called the holder of the card or a put option, you know, so it's going to long the option. And then the seller is going to receive the premium price and this guy has the obligation to buy or sell 100 shares if the price ends up in profit. And in this case, it's called the writer of a call or a put option. And at the same time, he's shorting the option. So yeah, let's see the differences uh, of the options that we have. There are two of them. It's a call and a put. And based on those two, you can long the call or short the call. When you are going to short, you are going to be the option writer, you are actually going to sell it. When you are going to be long, you are going to be the buyer. So let's say, for example, you believe that the price is bullish, you know, you are going to buy a long call. So in this case, uh, uh, if the price is going to end up and it's going to go bullish, uh, you can take those 100 shares of the initial established price and then sell them after and taking the profit for you. If you, however, you are going to put uh, a long put, you believe that uh, the market is going to go downways, you know, it's going to be in a downtrend. So the same tough is giving you the possibility if you want, let's say the price right now is 90 and you believe the price is going to be 80 in one month, if the, and you put a, a put option. So if the price is going to be 75, you will initially take the uh, options for 75 and sell them for 80 in this case benefiting you know for a profit of five dollars and the same for example let's say you are a long call uh, right now the price is uh, 80 and you put that it's going to be over 100 in 30 days so in this case uh, it's going to be the price is going to end up after these 30 days in 110 so you will have 110 minus 100 because it's the price that you establish so you will have a 10 uh, dollars profit per share but remember that in both situations you have 100 shares so you have to multiply this by 100 so in this case you will have a one $1,000 of profit and here you'll have $500 of profit however with the put it's not like this the, the the scenario so with the put like I said we have the obligation to sell that share so how does it work let's say for example uh, you, you this guy come to you and tell and believe you know that the call the price is going of the asset is going to go high higher than than, than what is right now but you know and you believe that it's going to go either sideways or it's going to go lower so in this case you establish with him in the same scenario okay i will give you the call option that if the price is going to be above 100 uh, you know everything that it's above 100 i will pay for it and you are going to take the benefit but for this you'll have to give me 50 dollars of margin and this is going to be the premium you know that he's going to pay and let's say if the price is going to be in 100 110 well in this case fortunately you are going to lose 1000 dollars minus the premium which is going to be of 50 but if the price of this asset is going to finish on whatever value of 100 or below of that you are going to remain with that 50 dollars of the premium and the same situation is going to be here but don't worry you know i'm going to explain um, this later on with some graphics and you can see this even better uh, but yeah at the same time you know uh, a good question is sometimes you know i i, I thought that you I, I believe that you heard that some stocks you know they have the splits and those uh, let's say for example right now the price is 100 and they announce for example a 5 to 1 uh, split on these stocks so in this case you know all of this but in general all of this it's all automatic but yeah if you 
you want to have an idea so the price of the share is going to sh change like for example initially it was 100 now it's going to be 20 but you are going to receive five shares instead of one but the same is applied you know for the for the for the option but in the end you know the the strike price and everything like that is going to be the same because it's a fraction of, of what it was previously so yeah now risk of buying the options so in this case uh, like I said, when you are buying an option, uh, the biggest enemy that you are going to have is the time. But when you are selling an option, your biggest ally is actually the time. I will explain this later or more. So, like I said, you know, they, they are going to either expire worthless or they are going to be torn in the shares, you know, of that uh, underlying security. So, at the same time, of course, we have the leverage. And yeah, leverage in general, it's a sword with uh, two edges, you know, it can also help you, but it can also make you lose down, triple or whatever the leverage it is. You know? So yeah, let's get on a little bit more with this and let's go to anatomy of an option symbol. So in general, an option contract is going to be a, a pill like this. SPX, for example, 210113P110. So in this case, can see SPX is the symbol of the underlying. The first two numbers, the first two digits are going to tell us the year of the expiration. After that, we are going to the second two digits are going to tell us the month of the expiration, and lastly, li lastly, we are going to have the day of the expiration. And then we are going to have a C or a P or a CCP, but I'm going to start with the basic ones. In this case, we are going to either have a call or a put, you know, in the strike price. In this case, the holder, we have a buyer and has the right to sell 100 shares of SPX at $103 at the end of 13 of 2021. So as long as you know, let's say, like I said uh, previously, the price can be 100. So in this case, he can buy them for 100 and sell them for 103. In this case, benefiting a margin of $3 per share. So $300, of course, minus the premium. Now the premium components that we have uh, the intrinsic value and the extrinsic value. I'm just going to explain them a little bit more, but in the intermediate and advanced lesson, I'm going to explain this more in detail. An option contract has intrinsic value if it's in the money. And what does it mean it's in the money? Let's say you have a strike price, 100 and, and right now the price is 101, for example, or 100 plus point something, it means that you are in the money. If that current value of the of the um, asset it's below you know that strike that you have so let's say you pay the strike on 100 but the current price is going to be 95 or 96 this is called an option contract that has no intrinsic value because it's out of the money and yeah but uh, don't worry i'm going to explain this uh, concepts with much more details later on the exercise in the assignment you know the exercise is the possibility for a call or a put as well. When you are along in a call or a put and the, the option expires in the money, like I said, you have $100 and at the end of the, it was your strike price. And at the end of this, the price is now 105. You can exercise this. Exercise, it means you are going to buy all these shares for 100 and you are going to sell them for 105. So in this case, the seller is going to buy them for 105 and you are going to buy them uh, from him to 100 and you are going to sell them after that with 105. So in this case, giving you the profit of $5 per share. The same for the put, you know, like I like I said previously, uh, if he if the option is going to expire in the money, you know, you are going to you are going to benefit uh, from this asset price. The assignment, you know, at the same time is the period in case of the contract, you know, uh, for this this is more for, sorry for the option seller. So in this case, the writer and. When it's assignment, it means that the option writer has to fulfill its obligation to sell the shares at the strike price or buy the shares at the strike price, depending if it's a call or if a, or it's a put. You know, he doesn't he doesn't know, and 
choose either when the assignment into locur you know so the option buyer you know controls that action uh, but yeah a short sold option can be assigned at any time even if it has no intrinsic value but it's very very rare to say that a buyer is going to exercise its right like it's no sense like you already lost money on the premium why would you buy with this price but yeah i'm not going to enter into this right now and then very important we have two type of options we have an american style and a european style american style it means that it can be the exercise it can be made at any point from the moment you buy it until the expire so let's say you have an expire of 30 days during all these times if you want you can exercise your 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 value but if we have an european you cannot do that it can only happen at the end of the contract period so in this case at the end of the 30 days it can be uh, exercised as long as it ends up in profit but here we can see some examples as well so we can see that for example a holder exercise a long abc call at 146 so he would purchase 100 shares at 146 so yeah if he would have 10 contracts because like i said each contract is 100 and share then in this case it would be 146,000 instead of 14 600,000 uh, so yeah as long as you know the profit the the option has an intrinsic value even if it's one cent you know it will be automatically exercised so yeah here we have we have a little bit more more examples but in this case it would be a seller so the seller for example in this case it would have to buy you know at the price which was being established uh, if the seller doesn't have the shares it will have to buy the shares at the current price you know this is very important but yeah uh, don't worry i will explain about this uh, with the type of trades uh, when we can make them and what everything is going to happen to them so yeah and then for example like i said the european style you buy one contract for example for the strike price of 2440 so in this case if it would be if you can see one one dollar in plus you can exercise it and you will gain 100 dollars because remember always you know it's 100 shares per each contract so yeah and this in, in this case you know uh, they are settled in cash and can only be exercised at expiration so yeah as i said previously you know the strategy that we have bullish for example for the buyer it would be a long call and for the seller it would be a short put and the bearish strategy that we have for the buyer it would be a long put and then we have for the seller a short call uh, so yeah uh, have a little bit more glossary here so in order to resume the option are financial securities that you can buy or sell it gives the buyers the right and the seller the obligation to buy or sell the underlying stock and other underlying investments there are two kind of option calls and puts on the call the buyer of the call option has the right but not the obligation to buy an underlying security at a specified strike price essentially that means that if you were to buy call option on a stock you would have the right to buy that stock at an agreed upon price up and until a specific date conversely the seller of a call has the obligation to sell the underlying security at a specific strike price specified strike price for puts the same the buyer of a put option has the right but not the obligation to sell in this case the underlying security at a specified strike price essentially that means that if you were to buy the put options on a stock you would have the right to sell that stock at an agreed upon price up and until a specified date but this depends like i said if it's an american or european assignment conversely the seller of a put option has the obligation to buy the underlying security at a specified price now we have the premium and in this case the premium is the current market price of an option contract it's what the buyer has to pay and the option seller is going to receive and yeah the european style and the american style 
European can only be exercised, assigned at the expiration, while the American one can be assigned at any moment during the option expired. I know that all of this seems and complex and there are a lot of new terms and jargons and all of this stuff but don't worry slowly i'm going to get through all of them and you are going to understand uh, everything that there is to know about the, the option market and how to get started with them yeah if you have any question here you have my email or my telegram and the website so yeah thank you for watching and see you on the next lesson